Low shall we go with the acid flow. All right, we've got this attack controlled references to segments. We've got the number of set references to segments, which is going to be attack controlled. And we have that used eventually in a for loop. So that's starting to look immediately like a acid exit condition. The ref segs is also attack controlled. And so it's finding a segment, pulling it out. What is a segment? That's a JBIG2 segment pointer. Okay, so it's whatever that sort of data structure is. Then it's going to do checking the type and it's going to check for a JBIG2 segment symbol dictionary, which is just one of the enumerated types. And then it pulls out the size from that attack controlled segment. So attack controlled size being added and incremented and increased into this numsims that started at zero. So acid controlled number of iterations, doing an acid controlled number of adds to the size. Well, that my friends is acid math and it's as bad as an acid path. So that is going to lead to a potentially small value there. Of course, it really leads to, you know, whatever value the attacker wants, but let's keep on trucking and see what might be beneficial. All right, down here, that numsims is used in a gmalloc C, a gmalloc N, rather. Uh, well, that should potentially make your exploity sense tingle because we've got a potential integer overflowed acid value used in an allocation. So it, could this be an under allocation? Well, sure could be. Let's go ahead and keep reading to see whether or not, if it is, we care if it is. So if this right here was a acid controlled loop that calculated and added up the number of symbols, then this down here is going to be an acid exit condition loop that is going to be getting some bitmap data. So acid number of loops, finding the segments again, pulling that in, you've got a segment, you've got the type, you keep going, take the segment, put it in the symbol dict, take the symbol dict and iterate through based on the size, which you know is the same sort of size that we got up there. And now it's going to take and pull out the bitmap value from within that symbol dict and write it into sims of KK. So KK starts at zero. Sims, oh, that is this thing right here that came from that potentially under allocated uh, allocation. So once again, this should make exploity sense tingle because we've got an acid loop exit condition. We've got acid manual memory copy going on inside. And above and beyond all that, we've got a potential under allocation. So carrot hands, Zeno says that it's not safe. It's our carrot case of common root causes, the case of an asset exit condition manual mem copying loop. So right here, I shall verily confirm for you that this sims is an under allocation based on an injure overflowed num sims. And the copying into a memory location is copying into the under allocation. So under allocation, and that is an over copy. What was the fix for this? Well, it's proprietary code and no patch analysis done by the researchers, so we don't know. Now, I just have to say that while I'm not going to get into the details of this, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go check out the Google Project Zero write up at six because the exploitation for this vulnerability was, quite frankly, pretty crazy. The attackers turned the fact that JBIG2 compression is actually Turing complete, and they created what is called in the security research community a weird machine. And that is a thing where you do something with operations that are not really meant to be used for arbitrary computation, but you still use them to achieve arbitrary computation. And in this case, they created a mechanism for creating ands, ors, and xors using arbitrary memory locations and thus achieving a sort of very complicated arbitrary write. So the quote from the original thing was, using over 70,000 segment commands, and these are the things that JBIG2 uh, components embedded in the PDF, Using over 70,000 segment commands defining logical bit operations, they defined a small computer architecture with features such as registers and a full 64-bit adder and comparator, which they use to search memory and perform arithmetic operations. So that is a wow level of exploitation. So while there's been you know, research in the security community on weird machines for a number of years, uh, it always felt to me at least like, you know, yes, that was a thing that would be possible for attackers in the far future, 
uh, because the reality is that most code, as you've seen in this class, is vulnerable to super trivial buffer overflows, integer overflows, and the like. And therefore, you know, I said, well, someday maybe things will start to be hardened enough that anyone will have to use a weird machine. But, you know, for the, for the next, you know, five, ten years, whatever, I don't think anyone's going to have to go there. So it is both noteworthy that the attackers had to go there, or at least that they thought they had to go there, because that means, you know, the, the defensive mechanisms are actually starting to reach the point where if this is the only way you can achieve your goal as an attacker, uh, we're actually doing pretty good as defenders. But it's important to remember that once these weird machines start to come into play, that will introduce all sorts of new complexity of how to stop attackers in the future. So there's all of those citations. That was not an animation I actually meant to do. Uh, citations for you to read after class in particular. Highly recommend this Google Project Zero deep dive on this particular exploit.